Yeah, so something I've always been fearful of is the synergistic connection between the far right and uh, activism towards possession of arms. So when you're discussing a civil war and you're discussing a revolution and there being two sides and there being a division, it's concerning to think that the other side is infinitely better armed and more experienced with high quality military weapons um, than our side might be. So I'm curious to the extent which, given that you've admitted and understand that a civil war and violent conflict is very, very possibly a part of all of this, to what extent are the Revcoms preparing and what does that look like? Um, and then kind of on top of that, since I assume that you are preparing to some extent, what is the, I mean, what, what are you waiting for? You know what I mean? Are, are you waiting for this election? Because this election is going to draw such a harsh line and people, whether or not they accept it, will define whether or not we dive into civil war. Um, why not make a move now? Is there a number of people that you need? Is there a number of guns that you need? Like, what, what does it actually look like? Is there a pathway by which the Revcoms make a first move and actually start this? Like, what, what does it really mm -hmm. look like? Well, a revolution is an act of millions. And it's really important because people have, and in the 60s, people who were righteously outraged by what was happening in Vietnam, for example, or to black people in this country, they went off and did different individual acts of, of you know, frustration, basically. Uh, small acts that were, you know, guerrilla warfare or, or excitative things of different kinds. This is not what we're talking about. It actually, in a country that's as powerful as this, with as much of a unified military might and stable uh, political domination over the minds of so, most of its population most of the time, you, that's, that's only gonna isolate and, de isolate and destroy those who try to do it, and it's gonna demoralize and disorient masses of people. It will not work. So revolution can only be made in a very rare circumstance. It's three main things. One is a crisis among the rulers so deep that they cannot hold it together in the ways they normally do and in the ways that the population is conditioned to accept. So when that breaks down, you have a chance to break the hold and the allegiance of millions to this system. It st things start to, and you have a chance for the institutions themselves and even the military to be split apart. Not right away at the beginning, but as this develops. Two, you need millions and millions of people whose desire for radical fundamental change is greater than their fear of the repression that will come down on them, who are demanding a different world and ready to fight for it. And we've seen this at different times, not a revolutionary people, but dimensions of this. You saw um, some of the potential for this in 2020 with 15 million people in the streets facing down rubber bullets and batons and all this, standing up saying, we, you know, black lives matter. You know, so you've seen, or in different ways in different parts of the world, you see sometimes people's fear gets broken and millions stand up. That wasn't a revolutionary understanding on a revolutionary people, but it gives you a sense of how it could emerge. And then you need a revolutionary vanguard force that is big enough and with the correct understanding to lead those millions with a strategy that could actually carry out the struggle to disintegrate and defeat bit by bit the forces of the other side. Not all at once, but in a, in a process that has actually gone into quite deeply in a pamphlet, uh, Revolution, A Real Chance to Win, five-part series from BA. So right now, the critical thing that we're trying to wake people up to and organize them into is that we are in a period where that first condition is already ripening. The rulers are split and they are only gonna get more divided and more at each other's throats. We're not hoping for a civil war. We're just saying that's actually the shape things could develop that way. And you are absolutely right. The forces of the state and the forces of fascism are way more armed to the teeth overwhelmingly than the, than the decent side of society. So this is a big contradiction. But one of the things that we are doing now is to actually, and the key thing now is to wake millions up change their thinking so that they see this system as the source of the problem and they see a different future that's possible. And so we're fighting to win millions to revolution and you can't launch or begin a, a, an actual revolution before you have all three of those conditions. It would be wrong, it's not what we're doing. But we're working to win the millions and then what I tried to describe in the talk a little bit and Baba Vakin goes into more in the social media posts that he has is how when you have those millions and when the all out fight for the direction of society breaks out, 
then what is the strategy that those revolutionary forces would have to engage in that would enable them to win their demand for a different society and defeat all the repression that comes at them? And there's a lot in that context in, a future society, in, a fu in future conditions that haven't emerged yet but could soon um, because of what's objectively developing and if we do the work to get millions who are one revolution where those forces for revolution engage in, in fighting with the repression that comes down on them that is in, in pieces, in pieces, so until it's able to build up the, the strength and the forces to be able to go all the way to defeat them entirely. So I know that that's, I'm not breaking down every step of it, but I'm trying to get the dynamics. And it's complicated, but there's dynamics. Revolutions ripen. And what we're doing now is saying that if, if there's not people who rise up, if there's not people who join this revolution and start fighting to wake people up and organize them into this, then that civil war could erupt and it could just be two ugly sides. You know, it could be just a one-sided slaughter. It's not that we're trying to make it happen. This is already developing independent of us. We're saying out of this crisis, there could be, if people get organized, a chance to take it somewhere good. Or there might not be a civil war. It might just be they sweep in they win power, they purge the government. This is what Trump is saying, purge the government. He's, you know, he's talked about executing Mark Milley, the former Joint Chiefs of Staff. You think if that's what he's talking about now, what they're intending to do, they could just do this one-sidedly without it being an all-out fight. This is, you know, that's what happened in Nazi Germany. It wasn't a two-sided thing to a very big degree. So we're saying change is objectively coming, radical change. Right now it's headed towards something really horrific and a lot of the decent people have their heads up their asses and are sleepwalking through it. And it's headed towards something horrible. But there is a chance through this, if people join this revolution and fight to spread it now, that millions could be woken up and won to this. And then once that happens, and this is the last thing I'll say about this, in the excerpt that I read from BA, from his social media posts, he talked about when the all out fight erupts for the direction of society, if you do have a revolutionary force, this system has a huge contradiction in the fact that its military and its armed forces are made up of huge numbers of people who are oppressed by this system. And they know that, and they remember this well, and this is something that worries them and something that we need to take note of. Back in the Vietnam War, they actually got to the point because, of, because they were losing, because the Vietnamese were kicking their asses and were doing it for a just cause, and that was starting to get inside the heads of a lot of the soldiers because of the anti-war movement in this country, and most of all, not most of all, but also very pivotal was the black liberation struggle here. You got to a point where the U US could not deploy reliable fighting forces in a lot of their units in Vietnam. And they did surveys among the Vietnamese soldiers, active duty, and especially among black GIs, but not only, a lot of them, they had much higher rates of approval saying they looked to leaders of the Black Panther Party than to any of the presidents of the US. And so that's a contradiction for them. And it's a contradiction that can come into play during the 2020 uprising, the Black Lives Matter struggle. There was a situation where black National Guardsmen who were called into DC to put down to pr those protests, they were ashamed to tell their family members what they were doing. That wasn't a split yet, but that shows you how things could divide out. When Roe v. Wade was overturned, there were female veterans in this country who burned their uniforms, said, I fought for this country, I believed in it, but what was I fighting for? I'm, I'm treated like a second class citizen. This is a problem for this system. Their military, their forces, their institutions right now, you have a lot of people walking out and, and, and defecting from Biden because of what he's doing in Gaza. He can't stop doing it because he's a representative of this system. But people who are even in his own administration have resigned. Congressional aides to the Democratic Party did something unprecedented and walked out and did a public protest on the steps of the, of the Capitol, which has, I don't think that's ever happened. Protesting the people they work for. This is a problem for this system. And so we don't have the numbers now. But there is a basis in the contradictions of this system and the fact that its own institutions are made up of people who are going to be forced to decide, are we, what is this country that's becoming fascist? Some of them will go hardcore for it. 
Most of them will go along with it unless and until there's another force standing up against it. But if that happens, there's a chance for that to, to crack and for sections of them to actually come over to the revolution. So there's a lot of strategy and strategic thinking in this, but it's serious and it's possible. But a lot of it, all of it, really depends on whether people are spreading this now. Because if you don't have a poll for revolution, it just goes to horror. Mm -hmm. So it's a really good question. Yeah.